welcome to Gemstone Tarot, Friday 17th, where there is a lot of astrology. I know, I will come to a point in my astrology course where I can say more than that, but look, that is a lot. So any of you astrologers out there, there you go, there's all the aspects, by gum. Even I know that's a lot. And the moon moving into Aquarius in the morning. Quite like a moon in Aquarius, actually. It gives me a whole sort of like out there kind of a feeling. Anywho, look what came in the post. The spiritual almanac. Do you remember I was trying to say the word almanac the other day to tell you that I've got a book? Well, this one divides into months like any almanac, almanac, whatever. And it's Joey Hulin. Joey Hulin. Nice pictures as well. So we're looking at February and we have a quote from Rumi. Oh yes, your task is not to seek love, but all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. And we have a fable. So I'm gonna do a little fable. It's only half a page. So are you ready? Those of you that have your breakfast ready, you've got your cats ready. I hope you've all seen the video. Oh my God, Amy's lovely cat Lawrence, that's on the shorts. So have a look, got a video of him just mesmerized by Valentine, which is very, very cute. Um, okay, and also if you have a little video that's under a minute long of you watching me in any way or what you do when you watch me or what your breakfast is when you watch me, or your animal watching or anything like that, do, and you don't mind me putting it on the channel, um, do email it to me, okay? It's gotta be a minute under a minute long, up to a minute under a minute. Anywho, the fable of two wolves. Are you ready? One calm evening under a sky full of stars, a Cherokee elder was sitting by the fire with his grandson sharing stories and wisdom passed down to him by his grandfather. He spoke of a battle that goes on inside most people. One of the wolves is fear. It's anger and jealousy and greed and regret and envy, worry, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, false truths, pride, superiority and ego. Just a regular day. The other is love and kindness and joy and peace, presence and hope, serenity, humility, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion and trust. The boy thought about what his grandfather had said for a minute. Before asking grandfather which one of the two wolves wins. Whichever one you feed, the old man replied. So I think I've heard that before. Let me know in the comments section. Now, I think we have a ribbon. Is there a ribbon? Oh, there is. Now, I like a book, and let me know about this too. I'm quite fussy about books. I like books that have a bookmark ribbon. Oh, yes. Look. Can I get it out? There it is. We've got a bookmark ribbon. And also, I do like a bit of internal stitching on the book, not gluing. I'm not sure if this has the stitching. I love a book with the stitch marks, I know. And also if it smells good, but that's only second-hand books. So, Spiritual Almanac, I think we're going to be doing a bit of that. ka -ching! Yes, and we're just having some Light Sears Tarot. We're just taking it light, some Light Sears Tarot. What do we need to know? Friday the 17th, the moon going into what I feel is quite eclectic Aquarius. What do we need to know? What do we need to know? What do we need to know? Ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think we need reversals actually at all. I'm not feeling the reversal type vibe today. That one. Cool. 
Let's have a fiddly widdly biddly bop. Oh, we've got Leia by the way today. There she is, gorgeous Leia. She's just been like jumped on by Minnie about a million times and so she tipped me the wink that I think she wanted to go upstairs. So I was like, yeah, you can come upstairs. Have a little respite from the terrorist that is Minnie. Okay. Let's put them up there a bit. Got my Aston Villa mug. Probably can't see it here. My football mug with my, um, what is it? From Foley Pottery, giving them a shout out. My licorice and mint. Okay. I'm noticing the Queen of Swords here and the Seven of Cups. Can you see the Seven of Cups in the middle? They've got like a similar posture and it's a posture of contemplation. I feel like there's something that we are ruminating over, that we are kind of ping-ponging around in our brain. I don't know if you heard that, but that's the boy actually going out of the front door. It's like having an elephant in the house. There's something that's being ping-ponged in between, um, in between the corners of your mind, I think. I think it's rational. Of course, we've got the lovers. The lovers is a Gemini type energy, but it's a Gemini energy because it's going from one person to the other, from one person to the other. It's like a dialect. And when you have a dialect or a dialectical, you have a sort of a, a ribbon of movement of a situation that's kind of going to you, to me, to you, to me. And each time one of you throws the ball back to the other of communication, it's changed a little. You've added a bit on, you've taken a bit away. So I feel like we're in the process of shaping something. And it might be an idea and it might be about a relationship. It's gonna be different for each of you because we've got the notion of an idea here. We've got people thinking about things, cooking things up, considering, pondering, ruminating, wondering, okay, lots of ings. But this lovers, there is always the element that for some people this is going to involve a romantic love, it's going to involve a relationship or a friendship, anything that is to do obviously with love. Seven of Cups, there's always that slight warning sign that you've got to keep things on the right side of the fence. So in other words, if you feel that you're straying into some kind of sort of fantasy thing, you can call yourself back in and do more of a Queen of Swords and be more rational and let your heart sort of rule your head on it instead because it feels like, it feels like there is just, we're still in, we're, we're moving into Pisces season from Aquarius season. So we're moving from what is this kind of more um, air sign energy and definitely a cleaner thought process into what is actually a more, I don't wanna call it foggy because it sounds negative and I am a Pisces and I'm trying not to be negative but it's a more swirly kind of thought process. It's more swirly, it's more watery, it's more tidal and it's more unpredictable, okay? So I would say, where are we? 17th, isn't it? We've got a couple of days to kind of clean up our mental act on where we're at so that at least we have our ducks in a row for when the emotional stuff starts because when we go into Pisces season, we move into the emotional season, the Neptunian, the Jupiter, the expansion of nuances and feelings and what's grabbing you and what's glittery and what's shiny and what's, what moves you. And as human beings, of course, when we're in that kind of territory, we can be a little vulnerable and fallible to making mistakes, but also page of wands, we can create stuff and we can make stuff happen because Neptune is also in its exalted state about creation, as is Jupiter and philosophy and making things happen and 
all the beautiful ways to make things look good and you know stories and dreamscapes and all of that kind of stuff so let's say you were thinking of making of opening a tarot shop or something like a real in real life one i know wouldn't it be nice um and that would be an example of how moving into pisces season could really work for you because you could work out how to make it a space that made people feel something so but as long as you've done your business plan with your queen of swords bit first if this is to do with a relationship there's going to be a kind of a hot spot here which is nice it's touchy-feely it's warmth it's kind of communion it's coming together it's talking and feeling and passion but make sure you've got your ducks in a row about your boundaries or how you feel or what you will and won't accept or what your deal breaker is whether this is to get out there again for dating or whether this is in an established relationship and again the seven of wands this has come up loads recently whichever situation you're in whether this is to do with moving career forward or moving relationships forward or sprouting an idea seven of wands tells you you are going to be required to know your bottom line to know your boundaries and boundaries has been huge for us recently it's come up so many times hasn't it um it's just am i really going to do that i am um it's been big in the monthly readings it's been big in the love readings it's just 2023 I may declare this early it's the year of boundaries so let me know in the comment section and drop your star sign as well how do you deal with boundaries because each star sign is very different I find okay we're going to do Libby both I know we're risking the wretched broth I'm already getting a tingly nose Ooh, the gleaner now, as far as I know, the old school of gleaning was when you were allowed into the wheat fields, I think, and you could take what was left. You could glean the last bits of wheat after everybody else had kind of wrung every drop out of it. I think that's what it means. So to glean something is to take from the entrails of something some meaning stuff that's already been cleaned out almost and you go back for the scraps and get a lot out of it but let me just check it yes 33 yes learning meditative process opportunity building skills so it fits in with the rest of our cards Plants, lighters, stories, coping mechanisms all have their uses, all go in the bag. This must be the bag. Looks a bit like many of my bags, to be honest. Through the wisdom she's gained, she knows what's good for keeping and what can be left alone, Queen of Swords. Though the fields are bountiful, she is selective because everything has to be carried. The appearance of this card is a signifier of abundance and an opportunity to learn. Trust in yourself that you can decipher the wheat from the chaff. This is it. And you'll know it when you feel it. Oh, yes. See, this is very much um, what my mum goes on about, the wheat and the chaff. And then there's such an awful lot of chaff, she would say. Um, so this is about getting what you can out of a situation. And I think that's what the Seven of Cups is as well, knowing what to keep and knowing what to let go of. And this, I suppose, can be looked at as thinking positively or making the best of it or whatever. But either way, the Queen of Swords, if you think of her as having this sword and you think of what it used to be in the wheat fields where I think you cut it down with a scythe. God knows how I know this sort of stuff, but I think it was biblical, so I probably did it when I did theology. And there's probably lots of parables to do with the wheat. In fact, I think there is. I know, so I'm still miming my wheat cutting here, like you do. Um... So get your information, devil's in the details, cross the I's, dot the I's and cross the T's even. And then the lovers, there will come a choice of some kind to do with this. Make sure you're on the side of sensibility, but without being completely boring about it and 
make sure you let your dreamscape side when we come into Pisces season on the 20th also have a say. And then something will kind of spark off it, but your boundaries will be in place. There you go. <sighs> Leave me a comment about gleaning. <laughs> let me know how it resonates and I'll see you tomorrow. Namaste.